let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to have uh, Brother David come and lead us in a song. As he gets prepared, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I pray that you would bless our time this afternoon. And Lord, pray that you would speak to our hearts in this simple uh, Christmas message this morning. Lord, we love you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, go ahead and turn over 208. 208. Ring the bells. <laughs> chapter 2 this morning, Luke chapter 2, and I do appreciate you sticking around for our afternoon service, and I know that everybody's busy, and uh, I think it's working out great having these afternoon services, so that way uh, people can have their evenings to spend with their families and such, and so again, I thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to read the Christmas story and then uh, just give a very simple uh, message. I kind of steal it from Brother Danny. He likes doing those uh, uh, acronyms, I think they're called acrostics. That's what I said. And uh, but, anyways, I'm going to do a, an acrostic with Christmas this morning, and we'll have the message. So, uh, let's read Luke chapter two, verse one. It says, "And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one to his own city." And Joseph also went up out from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And it was so that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in their field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, 
The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was cold unto them. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we read the Christmas story and just give some thoughts about Christmas this morning, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, encourage us, Lord, to remember uh, that you're the true reason of Christmas. And Lord, I pray that we would, uh, Lord, just be encouraged and uh, to draw nigh to you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in our next few moments. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I, like I said, I just want to give an acrostic this morning on the word Christmas. And I, I have like two or three uh, words uh, for each one. So when I consider Christmas, I think of the Christ child, the Christ child. You see, he was not just another baby that was born into this world, but he was the Christ child. He was 100% God. However, he was 100% man. His birth was miraculous. It was not uh, ever to be duplicated again. His birth was miraculous. There was, there's never been one like it, and there never will be one again like it. The Bible says in Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. A virgin shall conceive. She wasn't a fair maiden. She wasn't a fair lady, but she was a virgin. And that's something that we need to uh, keep in mind because, uh, you know, God came from a pure line there. And the Bible says in Matthew, fulfillment here in verse uh, 23, 123, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. The Bible says in uh, Luke 2, 7, And she brought for, forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. We see here the verse, there was no room for them in the end. For him, uh, I, I wonder, is there any room for him in our hearts today? We get it so clouded out with things that uh, are so... Uh, compact with things of this world, materialisms and times and things such as that, that we don't have room for the Lord in our hearts. I wonder if there's room for him today in the preaching of God's word. You know, so many churches today aren't preaching the word of God. They're preaching what makes you feel good and what makes you uh, happy and things such as that. Can I tell you what we need to hear is the truth, whether it feels good or not? You know, see, I wonder if there's room for God and praising and the pews and the people. Christmas time has become so full of things that there is no room for him in the end. Then uh, I think of not only the Christ child, but I also think of compassion of the Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It was because of his love for us that he came to this earth. The Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of, man, of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself, and being, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross." This time of the year, John 3, 16 really sticks out to me because that's the reason he came. For God so loved the world. You know, love goes a long way. It's God's compassion. It's his love towards us. When I think of Christmas, I think of compassion, but also I think of the cross that he would bear. He was, the songwriter said, born to die. That's the whole reason he came. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now that wrapped in swaddling clothes uh, it, it, the swaddling clothes was to draw out infirmities, but also it was signifying the death. Uh, uh, the, it was death clothes and that he would die. The Bible says in Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So I think of the cross, but then I want you to think of the H this morning. What does that H stand for? When I think of the H in Christmas, I think of the holiness of Christ. The holiness of Christ. 
describing the Lord to Joseph, the angel said this in Matthew one twenty. But while he fought on these things, behold, the angel Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. See, the Bible says in Hebrews 7.26, For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. I think of his holiness. You know, God was perfect. There was no sin nor guile found in him. He was holy. The Bible says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Then I also think of the age, I think of the humbleness of Christ. Uh, when I think of a king being born, I don't think of a lowly manger. I, don't, I think of a, a palace, but he humbled himself. A manger was a scene not pictured for a king. He humbled himself and became flesh, the Bible says. When I think not only his humbleness, but I think of the hope that's in Christ. Because he came, because of Christmas, because of Christ, we have a hope. The Bible says, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and uh, she brought forth her, uh, a son, and they shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. We have this hope. It's not a, it's not a man, I hope I get uh, Mexican for lunch today. It's a hope I know where I'm going. I, I, it's as if I've already been there 10,000 years, someone has said. That hope is a glorious hope that we have. Uh, we have this hope that we will be with him in heaven. And if you're saved, this hope is a fact. It's not a, uh, sometimes when we think of the word hope, it's, uh, we put it in our, our minds today. But it, this hope is a, it's a steadfast, it's a sure thing that's already happened. Hebrews 6.19 says, Which hope we have as an anchor of our soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into the, that within the veil. It's a sure hope. It's a steadfast hope. And because of the hope, the Bible says, uh, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then I want you to think of the R in Christmas. The R in Christmas. What does that mean? I, th I think of redemption. Redemption. The Bible says being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You see, I am justified. I am redeemed. The word justified means just as if I've never sinned. I've been redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ. See, the Bible says in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. You know, I'm not getting to heaven on my merits. I'm not getting to heaven on your merits or, or anybody else's. I'm getting to heaven on his merits and on his redemption blood. But then I think of reconciliation. Paul, again, speaking of reconciliation, he described it this way. He said in 2 Corinthians 5, 18, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, bringing us unto him, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Reconciliation. But then I think of the eye in Christmas. When I think of the eye, I think of the incarnation of Christ. The Bible says in Galatians 4, 4, it says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son. In that perfect time, the Bible says, He sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. The incarnation of Christ. The Bible says in Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. But when also when I think of that I, I think of the innocence of Christ. Now he was sinless. The Bible says for unto us, for unto, uh, I'm sorry, for even uh, here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither guile was found in his mouth. You know, he was perfect. You know, 
why would Christ come to this earth to become sin for us? Because of his love for us. He was innocent. You know, I think when I think of the innocence of Christ, the Bible teaches that like a lamb before the slaughter. And that's what Christ was. He was he was that perfect sinless lamb, that perfect sacrifice to pay for the sins of mankind. But then I want you to think of the first S in Christmas. When I think of this S, I think of salvation. You can't help but think of salvation when it comes to Christmas. In his coming, he identified his purpose. The Bible says, And she uh, shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt, uh, shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Salvation. We talked about this morning. The greatest gift that you'll ever receive is salvation. But then I think of S, I think of sanctification. I continue growing. The Bible says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteous and sanctification and redemption. Then the T in Christmas. When I think of the T, I think of he's the truth. He's the truth. The Bible says, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Bible says in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The Bible says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Because of Christmas, we have the truth. But then I think of the T as trust, his trust. The Bible says, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We can trust him this morning. No matter what bothers, what, what problems you have, no matter what anxieties you have, we can trust it to Jesus, knowing that he will care for us. Then I think of the M in Christmas. I think of the manifestation of Christ. The manifestation. The Bible says in Romans 3.21, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. The Bible says in 1 John 3.5, And ye shall know that he was manifested to take away the sin of the world. He came to, his whole purpose to come was to take away the sin of the world. But then I think of, when I think of the M, I think of mercy. And these, these are, I, there's, all many, there's so many things that came to my mind when all of these letters came up, but these are the things that really stuck out. I think of the mercy of Christ. Isn't God merciful? He's so good to us. The Bible says, Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from the high on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And then I want you to think of the A in Christmas. When I think of the A, I think of the authority of Christ. All power is given unto him. Jesus said, uh, Jesus said that uh, it says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, "All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth." He is all powerful. He is the one that has it all. Consider what Isaiah said about his authority. It says, Isaiah forty five twenty two, "Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else." There's a lot of people that claim to be God. There's a lot of people that claim to have power. But can I tell you that God is the one that sets up kings and takes down kings. The Bible says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The Bible says, Neither there is salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. But also I think of, when I think of the A in Christmas, I think of his ability. His ability. The Bible says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost. You know, all this really points back to the fact that Christmas is about salvation. Christ came. Why, you know, why did he come to save us? I mean, everything points back to salvation. But then I want you to notice the last thing, the last S this morning. When I think of the Christmas, I can't help but think of the second coming. The first time he come was Christmas Day. Second time he come. I, I'm looking forward. The Bible says looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Without his first birth, his first coming, we wouldn't have his second coming. And I'm thankful for Christmas because of the second coming. But then I'm also thankful for Christmas yes, for, because it's satisfaction. Can I tell you, you know, a lot of people are going to find, try to find joy in family this, this weekend. They're going to try to find joy in their friends. They're going to find, try to find joy in entertainment. They're going to, I mean, I know a lot of people that go on vacation during this time. They're going to try to find things in materialism. But can I tell you, the only true satisfaction, the only lasting satisfaction is in Jesus. Some may even try to find satisfaction in the bottle this weekend. This week. Some might try to find it in drugs. Some might try to find it in women or men. And, but can I tell you, the only true satisfaction that you'll ever find, the only true longing-lasting satisfaction is in the Lord. Can I encourage you this Christmas to think about Him? He is, I know it's not just a cliche, He is the reason for the season. Let us remember Christ this Christmas. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Again, I just wanted to bring you quick thoughts, some things about Christmas this morning. I hope that as you spend some time with your, your family this, this Christmas, I hope you'll go to Luke chapter 2 and read cha chapter 2 verses 1 through 20. I know you'll heard, you've heard it read this morning, you've heard it read maybe many times, our Christmas drama, Back to Bethlehem. That's what it went through, Luke chapter 2 and John and uh, uh, th those things. But uh, you'll, you'll notice that you'll hear that often, but don't ever, don't ever get to the point where you're tired of hearing about what, what, what Christmas is all about. Take time to teach your children, your grandchildren, your family, what's a true reason for the season is I'm going to have a word of prayer and I'm going to offer an invitation for you to come and just say hey Lord Lord, would you, would you use me this Christmas to be a beacon, to be a, a light to my family, help me to be what you want me to be, help me to shine in this time to tell others about Christ our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your love, for your mercy and your grace. Lord, I thank you for uh, just the opportunity to share your word. Lord, I pray that we will take these simple thoughts this morning. Lord, I, I know that some may go to their, uh, after hearing the message this morning, they may go home and think of their own Christmas uh, acronym there, Lord, acrostic, Lord. They, they may uh, come up with their own letters and words. Lord, I pray that you would just challenge us all to want to draw near to you. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor that comes from it. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Brother Adam's going to begin playing softly. God spoke to you. I'm going to encourage you just to find a place at the altar. Have you thanked him? Have you thanked him for coming to, I mean, it's so simple, but have you thanked him for coming to the earth? this Christmas? Have you thanked Him for all that you have? I mean, I know Thanksgiving is the month of, November is the month of Thanksgiving, but Christmas ought to be a time of Thanksgiving as well. God, help me to stay focused on what Christmas is about. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you for sticking around. I hope that everyone has a Merry Christmas. Uh, I, this last week, my wife uh, went into work, and she was telling everybody Merry Christmas as they left, and one of her patients didn't like that. They got offended because she said Merry Christmas, and they told her about it. 
And so she says, uh, she said to her, she said, uh, uh, you know, that's offensive. And Christy says, I'm not going to stop saying it. I'm going to say Merry Christmas anyways, because Christ is the reason for the season. They want you to say Happy Holidays, which if you do, that's fine. But Merry Christmas to you and to your family. Hope each, each one of you have a great time uh, spending time with your family. But remember, please remember what Christmas is about. Take time to think. Maybe go around the table. I know there's some patriarchs, some matriarchs in the family here in the church. Say, hey, what we're going to do this Christmas, we're going to try something different. We're going to just go around the table and say what we're thankful for. And point it, direct it as the moderator, direct it towards Christ. I'm thankful for Christ, for what he's done. And I promise you, I think that'll be an inspiration uh, to your family. All right, let's all stand and we'll close more to prayer. I, I failed to put this in the, the, uh, uh, the bulletin this morning. But we are having church Wednesday night. If you're able to come out, we're going to continue, Lord willing, our study there in Genesis. It's been going very well. And then also, one I failed to put this in there too, but it's Brother Jimmy's birthday today as well. So, Brother Jimmy, happy birthday. And uh, he's 28 as well too, right? Yeah. Yeah, you wish. All right. Thank you for being here. Hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful week this week. Yes, Brother Tim. Summerfield Nursing Home, if anybody's able to go, uh, Brother Tim's going to head that up today. All right, at 2.30. Let's close in a word of prayer. Uh, Brother Danny, sir, would you close us, sir?